This is the smallest plane I have ever seen. And we're getting in it. I am in Bar Harbor, Maine. I've actually never been to Maine before. It is super cool. I'm here for a friend's wedding. Congratulations, Nick and Kelly. And uh, yesterday I was in Denver in the Rocky Mountains and I couldn't imagine a more polar opposite scene between there and here. So this is the resort, Bar Harbor Inn, and out here looks like the tide is out and we're on these rocks covered in seaweed and it's super cool. But I want to talk to you about something really exciting, really awesome, but also sort of weird that's happened to me. And I guess the reason I want to talk about it is in case, you know, there are other people who want to talk about it. So, you know, if this message resonates with you and you want to engage, comment, I'd love to hear what you think. Um, I've been blessed to grow up in an entrepreneurial family my parents flipped houses. Um, they've had their own shops of different types. You know, they've, <clears throat> they've owned rental houses and they didn't come from money. They made it all themselves. Bootstrap kind of situation. Um, I didn't realize what kind of impact that had on me until I started doing it myself and through self-reflection realized that they modeled that for me. So, um, you know, eternally grateful for that. I don't think that they tried, I don't think that my parents tried living that way in order to model for me, you know, how to be. I think it just happened. And that's really what I want to talk to you about because I just sold my company for the second time probably sell it again in the near future it's just how these things go I don't know when or for how much but I'm sure it'll happen and every time I sell it I own less of it than I did before but it's all right <clears throat> it's been fantastic it's been one of the most wild rides of my life I appreciate the opportunities and everything everybody's done for me to get to this point but I keep getting surprised. It happened, you know, two and a half years ago, and now it happened this last week. I keep surprising myself 
that I don't really feel like celebrating. And people keep telling me like, oh, what'd you do to celebrate? Nothing. Just, you know, my way of celebrating this sort of thing is to just appreciate what happened, but like, I'm ready to get back to work. Oh, now it's raining. And that is what I really want to talk about. Because I've had friends over the years that have reached out to me who are, you know, trying to start something or be something or do something amazing. And they say, hey, Chris, you've done this. What are your thoughts? Like, how can I do better? And honestly, like, it's really tough to teach because you either got it or you don't. Um, and I want to say this message for a couple of reasons. You know, number one, if you got it and you know you got it and you're scared to do something with it, you know, that, that obsession, that entrepreneurial spirit, man, just go for it. I knew that there was a point in time where I had to do my own thing. Otherwise, I was going to be unhappy. I had to. I had to take that leap of faith. I mean, I got fired from a job. Yeah, whatever. We're not going to talk about that. I was, I was running a car club, and my work didn't really appreciate that. I was spending so much time organizing this car club event, so they let me go. But it was one of the best things that happened because I was really unhappy at that job. And I had so many, I vividly remember going into the sales manager's office. It was actually the, the owner's son. He was kind of running the place while the owner was getting ready to retire. I was like, hey man, like, I got all these ideas of how we can do things better and cooler and like make more money. Okay, like, let, let, me, let me join you and help. And he was like, ah, I appreciate that, but what I really need from you is just keep being an installer. So I was at a, a cop shop. We did a uh, police car and fire truck, ambulance upfit builds. Like we added the, the lighting and the sirens and the cages and the bumpers and all that kind of cool stuff. It was fine. I wasn't necessarily great at installing, but I learned a lot and I like working on cars. I like being around cars. So it was cool, but they, they, they let me go. They thought I should, you know, do the work they paid me to do. Can't blame them. But it was after that that I started out some of my own ideas. I've started a bunch of companies and I've been really successful with a lot of them. Um, we'll talk about that later. I think it's a mix of, you know, intelligence, some skill, luck and favor and I'll talk about favor in a different video because I think that's a really fascinating subject when it comes to being successful in entrepreneurialism but like when I was first starting it I stopped playing video games I stopped watching TV because I had this burning idea of what I wanted to build and that was significantly more fun than anything I could possibly do for like entertainment and I did it and I did it for years. I didn't take a paycheck for almost three years. I started on a $10,000 credit limit credit card out of a spare room in my house. My early investors were my wife who worked 60 hours a week as an RN and let me do my experiment. And my parents who bailed me out of some nasty, you know, young adult credit card debt. So those were my early investors, but they set me up for success to accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. But I didn't realize it until years later, but I was absolutely obsessed. I was addicted to building something. My leveling up in the video game was building a website and getting my first transaction then waking up in the morning with hundreds of dollars in orders of parts that I put on the website it worked and that was way more of an adrenaline kick you know and good feelings than any video game or movie or anything else I didn't care I didn't care about anything else except that for three years I was relentlessly building my empire 
until I figured out how it worked. And that's great advice. If you're trying to build something and you're just obsessed, keep going. Eventually, something's gonna click. So, I had years of success way before I ever sold my first company and did all that stuff. And, you know, I literally sold it again three days ago. But I've had people say like, oh, how do I, how do I do what you did? I don't know. You either have to, like you cannot help it and you shouldn't be asking the question or it's gonna be a struggle the rest of your life. I don't know, maybe you can, you know, willpower your way through it. You probably can, but it's a lot easier and a lot more fun if you can't not. Like I had to build this thing. I had to with every fiber inside of me. I had to, I didn't have a choice. I absolutely had to. I, I couldn't stop. It would kill me to stop. I was obsessed, literally obsessed, addicted to it, obsessed. Think of like a drug addict. Can you tell somebody who's just like willing to steal from their own parents for 50 bucks to go get their next fix? That was me, but I was running a, I was building a business. Like I would give up everything to be able to have 12 more hours to put into it, to build the next category on my website, to launch the next product line. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was crazy and I'm still that way. And so God, I'm trying to get to the point. Sold my company three days ago for the second time, made a ton of money, tons of money. And I'm so thankful for everybody who helped me get here but I haven't celebrated and I don't really plan on it. And it's not like a bad thing. It's just, we're trying to do it again. Like the, the plan is to sell it again. I'm not like trying to say this to sound cool, but as soon as the deal was over, me and my business partner, were both in the same spot. We are like, okay, like let's get back to work. Let's build the next one. We were both wired the same way. We were both like, Okay, that's cool. We're, you know, according to plan. Nice work, everybody. Let's keep going. I'm curious when will it ever be enough? When will I finally celebrate and say, we did it? It comes down to a question of when is enough enough? My wife has asked me this over the years. We've actually like done, ooh, slippery down here. We've actually done like marriage counseling to understand each other better and stuff. And through that process, she asked me a question a few times, actually over many years, she's asked me this question. Whoa, I'm gonna die. She asked me, when will enough be enough? Cause it's like, oh, I gotta build my car exactly how I want it. And I need more cars. I'm stepping on the seaweed now. I'm hoping that's gonna be, oh no, that is super slippery. I'm gonna go back up. Ah. I'm from Minnesota, I'm not used to Maine. We don't have this kind of stuff in Minnesota. Anyway, everything I buy, everything I build, I want it to be perfect. And I'm obsessed with getting it perfect. Every car I've ever owned, I want it to be perfect. I want to fix every little imperfection. I got a vision for it and I want to build it. Every house we've ever owned, including the current one, I just want it to be perfect. I got these ideas and I want to execute them. I don't care. I don't care how much it costs. I want it to be exactly what I envisioned. And that's what's going on with this business. Like, it's still the business I started in my basement, combined with some other people's businesses. Now we're doing it all together. And I am so excited about what it has turned into and what it can still turn into. So I haven't celebrated yet. It's not done. Someday we'll celebrate. But I'm not done yet. If you are obsessed with your idea, you cannot stop thinking about it. Just start. I mean, like I started this vlog. I don't know if it's going to turn into anything. 
I just need to express myself and maybe somebody will engage. But if you are obsessed, you just start. You just gotta start. Some people are like paralyzed by this idea of like, oh, it's not perfect yet, or I'm not really sure how to do it. Nobody knows how to do it. But if you are obsessed, you don't need to know how to do it. You will figure out how to do it. Being an entrepreneur is like jumping off a cliff and building the airplane on the way down. Seriously. And what that means is just do it. Start something. Start something and keep building it until it's exactly what you want. It's going to take years and that's okay. Because six months later, you say, wow, this is turning into something. And two years later, you're going to say, wow, it's even more something. And maybe someday you'll look at it and say, I'm so glad I just started. And look at what I got now. I've been on this journey for 12 years, maybe 13, and I can't even see the end. I thought I could, I would be able to by now. I can't. I mean, we're going to sell it again in a few years, and then what? I don't know. A lot of people say it's important to celebrate the small wins. And to me, it just feels like it ain't over yet. Why celebrate? Anyway, thanks for listening to me ramble. I thought this view was too good not to share with y'all. I hope you have a dream. I hope you have a big crazy idea. And you're brave enough to just start.